So recently someone told you that you should actually use Rebase rather than Merge. But what's actually the difference between those two? Let's have a look. So in this video here, I'm using that learn git branching js.org site, which is extremely helpful if you're learning git. Because on the left hand side here, I can issue some commands. And on the right hand side, at the same time, I see basically how my git tree evolves. Now visualizing the Git tree in your mind, even if you're using Git on a daily basis, is highly recommended because that will help you to know which command you have to execute. Now let's see how branching works. Let's here issue a couple of comments and you can see how my master branch evolves. So I generate new comments on top of that branch. Now let's assume I'm starting a new feature. And usually what you do is you create a new branch, a new feature branch where you work on for a couple of days. And so let's add some comments here as well. And you see how my feature brand evolves. Now assume either someone else commits on master or maybe we even have to go back and do some hot fixes which need to be deployed immediately. So we add some new comments on master and those comments cannot be done on my feature branch because those features which I'm developing there are either not yet ready or shouldn't be released into production, right? And so I'm continuing in master, but then the next day I'm going back to my feature branch, but I also want to get those hotfixes immediately merged into my branch such that I'm working on the latest code base. And so what I could do by using a merge strategy is I merge in master. Again, I'm continuing to work here on my feature branch. Let's say maybe on master something else happens in the meantime. Some other comments from my workmates come in. And again, at some point I'm telling basically okay, my feature branch is done, so let's merge it into master. Again, I'm using the merge strategy and I'm telling to, from master to merge in my feature branch. And what you can see now with each of these merges, I get here a different merge comment, which contains basically the merging of both of these branches. As well as here, when I'm merging back my feature branch to master, I again get a merge comment just for the purpose of merging those two together. Now, as you can see here, I'm getting a quite a nested structure where arrows go back and forth between the feature branch and master. This is quite different to a linear history where basically I have all the comments in one row. Now, why would I even want a linear history? Well, usually for basically better understanding where certain changes came from, because I don't have all those merge commits. And I also can much easier follow a straight line than all these nestings. Moreover, Git has a very neat feature which is called Git Bisect. Git Bisect allows you to debug and find a comment that broke a certain feature. Now bisecting with such a nested structure is much, much harder. Similarly, also reverting changes is harder in a nested structure. So let's see how we can have a flat history by using Git Rebase. All right, so we have again a clean structure here. Let's again simulate here some comments on master. Again, I'm checking out a new my feature branch and I start working on that feature branch. Just as last time, we have to go back to master for issuing a couple of other comments, which we don't want to have on our feature branch. Now again, the day after when I go back to my feature branch and I continue working there, I usually in the morning want to update it to the latest state of my current development line, which, which is master. And so instead of doing a git merge master, I'm doing a git rebase master. And what this will do is basically it will take each of these commits and play them on top of the latest changes on my master branch. And so as you can see here, it takes C3 and C4 and then basically adds the changes and place them on top of what happened on master. I'm still having a different branch here, as you can see. And you also know that these are now C3 and a bar on top here. And this is the reason is because these commits are different ones than these one here. So we will have a different git commit SHA key. I can now continue to work on my branch and just commit new changes. And once I'm done, I can go back to master and do a git merge my feature branch. Now, since all of these comments are already in line and up to date, what Git will usually do is a fast forwarding merge, which means that it will not create a new merge comment, but it rather will just move the pointer on top of the last comment. And so you can now see that we have a very straight line, which is easy to follow and easy to reason about. 
There's one thing to note about the rebasing. As you can see here, we create different kind of comments once we basically do the rebase. Now, if this branch was a shared one, you shouldn't do any kind of rebase because that would mess up the whole history for your other partner that works on the same branch. So only use rebase when you're the only person working on that branch. Now, if this is something that is interesting to you, definitely go to Akkad IO Courses Productive Git for Developers. I've created there a course which walks you through the main commands which you need on a daily basis to safely navigate through the different Git commands.